As discussed in Module 1, the value chain represents the key internal activities that a firm performs to create, deliver, and capture value. So we can think of the organization as a bundle of activities, or some may say a bundle of routines. These activities are carried out and managed by the individual within the organization. These activities should be well aligned to support the organizational strategy for its products and or services. In this module, we will gain an understanding of the complexity of WCSC organization by mapping some of its key activities. The activity maps charged to organizational key activities illustrate these activities and their linkages to the value chain proposition as well as to each other. The activities may be those that contribute to creating customer value as well as for cost management. Let us think about the activities map as a visualization tool to help understand the connection between activities that are carried for to build upon the organizational strategy. The activity map can help you see how well each activity supports the overall positioning of the organization, its products and services in terms of the market need that has been met, the customer that has been served, how the customer has been served, and the profit contribution as a result of transaction with the customer. So how can we build an activity map? So we start with what should make a firm different from any other competitor in the market, is value proposition. The value proposition refers to the offering from an organization that helps a potential customer get a job done more conveniently, effectively, and or more affordably. What will make a customer buy and continue to use your product and or service? Next, to deliver on a value proposition, there are a number of key activities that are carried out. Some of these activities could generate costs for the firm, others activities could create high value or could be a combination of both or multiple outcomes. But once the key core value proposition elements are identified, we can then draw those connections between the activities in which the firm is engaged and the value chain elements to understand how they contribute to each other and how they impact one another. So let's do an example. The idea behind the value chain and this activity map is not to identify the best activities or those that you only want to highlight, but to try to get a general sense of all activities that the organization is conducting um, in general. And so in this example, I like to have this hypothetical organization, and we will first, uh, the first step is to kind of identify what you perceive as the key, most valuable elements, the value proposition elements for the organization. So let's imagine this organization has three of those elements. So let's start out. One of those will be corporate fu uh, cooperative funding. And let's say another one is standard setting. Let's say, for example, another one is uh, attract and hire uh, key experts in the industry. So these make up the, the key components of the value um, proposition elements. So these are connected. These are the elements that the organization believe as a, as a result of these being at the core, they're able to deliver high value to the organization as well as to their customer base. And so what activities will an organization engage in to deliver on these value proposition elements? And so let's just consider four for this brief example. In this case, one could be uh, globally dispersed. Another one, for example, um, long lead time to market. No, another one, um, broker for contract agreements. And let's have as a final one that their products encapsulate the standards. So you can think of the, this hypothetical organization, which of these core elements in the middle, these value proposition elements, also corresponds to those key activities. So in the case of cooperative funding, there could be a link between brokering of contract agreements. There could be a, a, a linkage uh, in that case between for perhaps a long lead time uh, to market, and maybe um, those will work. And then the next case we could look at in terms of their standard setting uh, value proposition, this might be that the products en encapsulate those standards, they're able to be globally dispersed. And if we, if we look at also globally dispersed, we could say that's probably connected to the fact that they also have employed or they use the service of key experts in the industry. So the idea behind this value map is for you to first map out what you think those core elements are, these first three, the key experts, 
corporate to fund in standard setting, and then other activities that the corp organization might engage in in terms of the activities that to deliver on that value proposition, which might be the long lead time to market, broker uh, contract agreement, being globally dispersed, and the fact that their products encapsulate the standards. And so the idea behind a value map and the activity map that you will be constructing is to look at the, the documentation that's included in the case and then go, up, go about the process of trying to identify what do you believe are their core value proposition elements that they deliver and then what different activities do you believe or you assume that they are engaged in, t in order to deliver on those and then connect those elements. And then additionally, you can look at the elements themselves, the activities, and say, how might they be related? So in terms of long lead time in the market, there might be a connection between the fact that those products encapsulate standards. And so as we go through the map, you just try to look at those linkages and, and relationships. And then you can, in the analysis phase, you can go through and see, does this increase cost? Does this impact value? And so this process allows us to then look at each activity that organization is engaged in, and also to look at the organization's overall strategy, their value proposition, how do those elements line up to create better profitability and higher organizational overall success and performance. So the benefits of the activity map to the value chain management is that it allows you to identify strong positive and or negative interactions and relationships between these activities to possibly identify any misalignments with the strategy as well as activities being performed by the firm. And also there's an opportunity to identify those potential missing activities and or relationships. To practice this lesson, reconsider the content of the case study and build an activity map for WCSC. Be sure to discuss the rationale for your decisions in terms of the value propositions, what you've chosen as key activities, and also how they're connected and linked together. Thank you so much for your time and see you soon.